the Chase Thomas podcast for people who have nothing but time to kill. Winning rookie of the year in 2024. Uh, I mean, I think it's as good a case as any. I mean, I don't, you know, looking the, the easiest way I find for for rookie of the year stuff. Well, no, because yeah, I was going to say Yamamoto's in the NL. I think mm. NL rookie of the year is probably a pretty safe bet. That's Yash- that's Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Yeah, but. Uh, if you look at uh, in these amusing fan graphs uh, board, uh, look at the 2023 updated. Here are the guys I think in the AL who, presuming they get the call at some point, uh, if, if they either start the year with the team or get called up at some point later in the year, will probably be part of that conversation. Jackson Holiday for sure, and I think that's probably the biggest competition with Carter for for just at least off season favorites for AL Rookie of the Year. I, I guarantee Holiday will come up at some point in the season. He is too good to spend the entire year in the minors, barring injury. Um, he has been phenomenal so far in the minor leagues, so that's one to keep an eye on. Uh, I think similarly, Junior Caminero in Tampa Bay, with it looking like Wander Franco is never going to play Major League Baseball again. Uh, the Razor, I assume, going to be trying every possible option they have in the left side of the infield to help fill that spot. Um, I, I don't think Caminero is going to be the starting shortstop. I don't think he has the defensive chops to do it, but I think he's certainly going to get plenty of playing time. Uh, and here's the other name I find really intriguing. The other guy who might cut into Carter's rookie of the year potential, one of his own future teammates, Florida's own Wyatt Langford. Hmm. Who, uh, it's funny. We just, I, I'm always going to be doing this. We, uh, Fangraphs just ran its 2024 zips projections for the Texas Rangers. And I just want to note that Zips, the projection system, very, very high on Wyatt Langford. His projected stat line, 599 plate appearances, a 264, 324, 489 line, a 122 OPS plus, uh, and a weighted on base average of 346. Adds up to two and a half wins above replacement. He actually projects for a slightly higher war, WOBA, and OPS plus than Evan Carter. Um, I think, you know, and they're, they're probably, you know, it's a, I guess it turned into more of a Carter Langford Texas Rangers thing. They're going to get there in different directions. Carter is more of a patient hitter, as we saw during the postseason, a fantastic eye at the plate. Langford is a big time power guy with just tools out the wazoo. Um, you can argue as to which gives you the higher ceiling theoretically. I mean, Carter, I think that with Carter, the bet is that the floor will probably be higher. There's less boom bust with him, uh, whereas Langford is maybe a little bit of a riskier prospect or project, but. Um, I think certainly, look, I, I don't expect Carter to be as good as he was in his short stint uh, with Texas last year. I mean, you know, you look at the at the numbers he put up, uh, which I'm just pulling up right now, um, you know, a 412 batting average on balls in play that that's not going to happen again. Mm. You know, um, and you can see it. You can see it reflected in the expected stats, too. He posted a, a weighted on base average in uh, and this also tiny sample size, 75 plate appearances, a 435. Uh, the stack cast expected stats figure that's closer to should be should have been closer to three or would have it would have projected or expected a 339 woba um and look there's plenty of good in there the exit velocities are good the barrel rates are good the hard hit rate is good like i said the plate discipline is good but you know he's still you know he doesn't turn 22 until until late august there's still going to be a lot of adjustments he's going to make you can see how the way pitchers adjusted to him uh, over the course of the postseason, started attacking him more down and away with breaking balls. He's going to have to learn how to lay off those pitches, how to how to you know do optimal damage on that kind of stuff. But I think as of right now, and again, without knowing what the Orioles are planning to do with Holiday, um, assuming that Caminero doesn't really have a consistent playing time spot, and assuming that the Rangers don't call up Langford right away, I feel like Carter is probably your AL Rookie of the Year favorite. Um, I mean, who knows? Again, there, there are plenty of other names I could I could mention here. Ricky Tiedemann for the Blue Jays, who I think will probably play a big role with them. Uh, potentially Kobe Mayo with the Orioles as well. Uh, so you're going Kobe Mayo over Jackson Holiday? No, I think I, I think the if you want it one, two, three, I think it'd be Carter, Holiday, and let's go with Langford over Caminero. Um, mm. But I think Mayo is a guy who I, no, actually probably not Mayo, but where does Mayo uh, play? He is a outfielder. Okay. So I, they I brought think, back Cedric know. Mullins. I'm just trying to figure out the path because that's the other part of this too, is you got to figure out pass forward and where they would fit. And yeah. And I think, it. Well, I think with Baltimore, it's a little harder to find outfield spots than it would be for yeah. a guy like holiday just to take over shortstop full time. Um, so I think that that is just going to happen. Um, Speaking of holiday, you want a crazy stat from baseball America? I always, I love crazy stats. Okay. Um, there are 13 MLB teams. Um, and JJ Cooper has this great MLB writer over there at baseball mm-hmm. America. And he said, 
there are 13 MLB teams who have never had a prospect rank number one on Baseball America's top 100 prospect list in the 35 year history. Mm-hmm. Um, the Orioles have three in a row now, John. Unreal. What what the they've bo- done with that farm system is absolutely unreal. It's unprecedented. And so there's only been four teams that have had three or more number one prospects ever. The Braves have had six. Go Braves. Uh, mm-hmm. Orioles and Rays have had four now. And the Twins have had three. Um, there have been multiple uh, players who led top 100 prospect lists in back-to-back years. Uh, Andrew Jones, Joe Maurer. So this is why this is important, too. The names who <laughs> lead these lists, Andrew Jones, Joe Maurer, Bryce Harper, Wander Franco, obviously, is a little bit different now for uh, very bad reasons. Um, J.D. Drew was actually number one in 99. People forget, uh, not to turn this into yeah. old man remembers, but people forget. <laughs> here how... is the J.D. Drew hour here for Dad John Taylor. Good J.D. Drew was as an amateur player. Mm-hmm. Just a phenomenal player. Um, really cannot stress that enough. No, I mean, J.D. Drew is, I think it's just like for me too, I was older. Uh, I was young when he was so eight years old when he's at number one on that list so i only know old jd drew where it's just right field just raked a little bit and could barely move and just nice little power bat in the six hole um but i just think it's crazy that adley Rutschman, obviously number one in 2022 uh mm-hmm. gunner henderson number one in 2023 and now jackson holiday number one in 2024 so the list when you look at who have made the cut and who had like jackson holiday Go ahead and buy the stock. Like the Orioles are going to go three for three and multi-time All Stars and everything else. It's it's really unbelievable what they're churning out here without the misses over the last couple of years in in Baltimore. Yeah, and just imagine if they've been able to add some pitching to that pipeline. I mean, I know one <laughs> what of those, if John. Uh, it, I know one of those guys, obviously highly ranked, is Grayson Rodriguez, but didn't I go mean, well last year. No, and and some of that's the adjustment, but I think and, and some of this too is like you know Baltimore lucked into. Uh, mm. A number one pick when a generational catcher was was available, and then lucked into both a number a top two pick when similar a seemingly another generational talent was available, and for Arizona to take the other superstar kid or son of a big leaguer instead of the first superstar son of a big <laughs> leaguer. It's also fun mm-hmm. to think that that Matt Holiday has another probably as good if not better son coming Does in he? the wake of J- yes Jackson Holiday's brother. Uh, whose name I'm looking up because I don't remember it off the top of my head. Better be uh, Cash Ethan Holiday. Holiday. What, did, what is uh, it? Ethan Holiday. He is oh. 16 years old. Mm. He is already starting to rise up uh, uh, prospective draft and prospect rankings. Matt Holiday did right with his kids, man. They, he is building an absolute dynasty <laughs> out of his own loins. Um, wait, so he wasn't so bad the... himself either. Who were the number one players for the Braves beyond Andrew Jones and Chipper Jones? So that's two. Uh, Acuna. Acuna. That makes sense. Um, I'm doing oh, do you not have it in front of you? No, I'm guessing oh, right okay. now. I'm doing. I'm guessing who else would have been. Um, so that's three for 30 years. Um, hold on. I'm going to get this. Tommy Hansen probably wasn't number one. Um, womp womp. But I'm thinking Ty Hansen was up there. Um, There's a lot of hype back in the day for him. Uh, Medlin, I wouldn't say. I'm trying to think of any pitchers. I guess probably not pitchers. I'm thinking um, no for call. No. Oh, Freddie Freeman. I, I found the list. Okay. It's okay. Uh, so you Chipper Jones, Andrew Jones, who did it twice. Uh, okay. Ronald Acuna. So we got mm-hmm. those three. Uh, Jason Hayward. Oh, forgot Hayward. Yeah. Forgot Hayward. And I, mm. I want to give you, I want to give you three guesses to get the last one. I'll be ama- I'll be stunned if you get it. Okay. I would not. Uh, I would never have guessed. Is he a pitcher or a, a position player? A pitcher. And I, had, I didn't say Medlin or Hanson. It's not one of those. It's not. It's not one of. Uh, it's not one of the young guys. Medlin, Hanson, or Brandon Beachy. None of those dudes. None of those dudes. Okay. Yeah. So how? What year time frame? This is cheating a little bit. Uh, early nineties. Oh. oh. Okay. Um. Did he Nagel? No. Mar not Mark Will. Um um Oh, Kevin Millwood? Nope. Carrie Lightenberg. I was waiting for you to say Carrie Lightenberg. It's not Carrie Lightenberg, but I did just want to have a let's remember some Carrie Lightenberg. Yeah, Mike Remlinger. Steve Avery. Oh my god, Steve Avery. Steve mm. Avery. Goodness gracious. 
That it's amazing that that list is uh two one get one existing Hall of Famer, one potential Hall of Famer. A guy in Acuna who, if things continue as is, will be a Hall of Famer. Mm. Um, a guy in Hayward who, for a very short period of time there, looked like a future Hall of Famer. And Steve Avery. It's a good I list. Don't think, I don't think anything better illustrates the variance of prospects than having that be the spread of number one guys. No. Or is it, I mean, you can even look at the fact that one of the Orioles' uh, number one guys was Matt Wieters. Yeah. And he was solid. Uh, like, he didn't have a Hall of Fame great, but he was solid. He was fine. Um, he was, he was, I think it would have been very funny if the universe with Adley Rutschman had just done Weeders 2.0 and just given the Orioles the exact same outcome, but. But I think Orioles fans would have been okay with that. Like, Weeders was good. I, yeah, I mean, I think the. He I mean, didn't live up to the hype, but Weeders was good. Well, that's the thing about. You gotta look at it this way. You could have been, you could have been a Bart situation and it was sure, not a Bart situation. Been, he could have been Matt Clement. Yeah there, yeah, there are way worse ways that could have gone. But I think that's, that's the thing with having a number one prospect is how do you, how do you manage that hype of, you know this guy was named a number one prospect and instead he turned out to be a perfectly fine MLB regular who, you know, I mean, Matt Wieters, Matt Wieters finished with a career wins above replacement baseball reference version of 18.3. It's fine. It's not great. I think he I retired mean, young. What was his age? Uh, He retired at, after his age 34 season, which was the pandemic shortened season. Okay. So, I yeah, mean, you look at that long. What's up? Didn't go that long. Like he didn't have like a crazy long career behind the plate. He no, didn't really no, transition. No, he, he had a bat where you could have seen him early on. Like maybe not do the first base Joe Maurer thing, but still probably could have. I, I don't know. He, you could have seen even with the B plus solid career, him just hang around for a long time. Sure, but I mean, just like, keeping. I mean, keep in mind that eighteen point three wins above replacement. That is less significantly less than among others. Uh, Carlos Guillen, Grady mm. Sizemore, Denard Span, uh, Jose Quintana. Paul Canerco, Baltimore's favorite, J.J. Hardy, uh, Sixto Lizcano, Josh Josh Hamilton finishing with fewer career wins above replacement than Melvin Moore is just... Wow. That is a fun, fun stat right there. Melvin uh, Moore. Yeah, that's a name we haven't thought... Speaking of Orioles' favorites from bygone days, uh, that's... Matt Wieters finished with 10 wins fewer in his career than Tim McCarver did, although Tim McCarver played for 21 seasons, so that's maybe not entirely fair. Uh, Brandon Phillips outward him. Vernon Wells outward him. Uh, I, I don't want to turn this into the let's crap on Matt Weeders hour, but you know it's it's being a number one prospect is rough, man, because those yeah. those expectations are very very high, and you know if some guys meet them and some guys finish with a career about half as valuable as Carlos Guillen's did, so or was rather. There you go. Um, John Taylor, final thing here as we wrap up uh, this edition of the pod. Uh, buy or sell, the Diamondbacks are in a position to win more regular season games than they did a year ago. Hmm, that's a tough one. Uh, I'm going to cheat a little and use uh, and go to our... We have our... We again, because Fangraphs <laughs> has a Zips projections for the Diamondbacks. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Dan Zimborski, the Zips maestro. Mm -hmm. uh, ballpark that we find out his name is part of the Zips that I did yes. not realize because I'm a dummy. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just doing Zips oh, for years. Go. Nicely done, nephew. The Chase Thomas podcast. <laughs> Hell yeah.